What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so this is the situation. We have Invest 94L right here, uh, as of what we're looking at in the satellite imagery. We have a lot of breaking news to go over, so we're going to go over it as quickly as possible. We're going to go first go to the five-day Atlantic graph. The Atlantic uh, Ocean right now is very active with invests in other tropical systems. But the main focus of today, at least for now, is going to be Invest 94L, which is this one right here with the 90% chance of development. A tropical wave located about 700 miles east-southeast to the southern Windward Islands is producing a large area of showers and thunderstorms. Environmental conditions appear conducive for development, and a tropical depression or a tropical storm is likely to form in the next day or so before the storm reaches uh, the Windward Islands Tuesday night or possibly moving uh, westward across the southern Caribbean Sea Wednesday through Friday. Uh, this, is, this next part is very important because... We are now finding tropical storm force winds in this invest, which means that once the NHC designates this something, this is going to be a tropical storm, and it's going to have a name with it. So everyone needs to pay very close attention to this. A NOAA Hurricane Hunter aircraft is currently investigating the system and has found winds of tropical storm force. Now, to explain this further, we're going to go ahead and go to the recon right here. This is NOAA Aircraft uh, 2 in the mission uh, right now. Its current aircraft position, if we can look at it now, is about 9.5 north, 50.7 uh, 50 west. And this is some of the stuff they've been finding. Where they're finding flight level winds around 42 to 43 knots, and they're finding SFMRs uh, kind of uh, kind of around 38 knots, which if that is calculated correct, that is uh, that is around a 40 mile per, uh, mile per hour tropical storm. I think that ends up calculating to around 43 miles per hour. So this thing is not only organizing, it's also strengthening as well. So that's what we're looking at right here, and this is something we need to pay attention to. But let's go ahead and continue this. Uh, right here. Interest in the Windward Islands and along the northeastern coast of Venezuela should monitor the progress of the system and tropical storm watches or warnings could be required for portions of these areas today. 70% chance of development in the next 48 hours, 90% in the next five days. So if you're in the Windward Islands, if you're in Venezuela, if you're in a little bit of Colombia, if you're in Central America, you need to pay very close attention to this. You need to take it very seriously. We have two other invests out in the uh, out in the Atlantic Ocean right now, but our main focus for this video is on Invest 94L. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna uh, cover those at some point. I'm just not going to do it uh, with this video because this is a very big, potentially a very serious situation. So we need to go ahead and take a look at uh, current storm information. It's been kind of bugging out here uh, here and there because uh, and everything, but still. 30 uh, knot winds, which that's from that's from 12Z, which is around 7 a.m. Central Time. There have been some flight level winds indicating close to 40 knots, so everyone needs to pay attention to that. We're looking at a pressure 1,009 millibars, location 8.2 uh, north, uh, 49.1 west. If we look at the recon, it's actually it's actually less further away uh, from that. So, yeah, if we take a look at that, so. That's basically what we're looking at. Maximum radius of winds, uh, 90 nautical miles. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about the shear real quickly because the shear is pretty much, it's open season for this thing. And because there's pretty much no shear that's going on with this. Like the where it's passing, which is basically just north of Trinidad and Tobago, there is like there is weak enough shear for this thing to develop into potentially into a hurricane as well. So I want everyone to understand this. And this is why I'm covering this. Because this has the potential of developing into a very powerful storm. And the intensity models right here depict this. We have a fair chunk of these models now indicating at least Category 2 strength at this point. The majority of these models now have it as a hurricane. A fair chunk of it has it as a Category 2 or higher. We, we now even have a couple more, uh, more models at, at Category 3, which, again, not off the table, but it is still unlikely at this point. It'll depend on how warm those waters are, how deep that water is, and where the wind shear is, and basically how strong it is there. So we're looking at the waters right here. 28 to 29 degrees uh, Celsius, about 83, 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Plenty of warm water for this thing to develop and organize and intensify. The question is, will it completely tap all of it uh, as it's uh, strengthening? We'll have to figure that out. It is moving at a fast enough pace for it to kind of like take maybe a few meters of, of it off, but maybe maybe not. So we're going to have to pay very close attention to this. The, the warm water is literally 
I have to emphasize this again because this isn't just a 28 to 29 degrees Celsius area in one spot. This is for the whole Caribbean Sea where this path is going. So I want everyone to understand this. Now, we do have a couple of models we need to go over. We're going to go over the H uh, HMON and HWARF models. So this is what we're looking at. This is the latest they have out. So we're going to go ahead. It's developing, meandering a bit, and then it starts to get a little bit more organized. It's, sorry, this is all over the place. And then it passes uh, north of Trinidad and Tobago, passes to the south of the of, of Lesser Antilles right here, the southern tip of them. And then it starts basically, okay, this thing's... Uh, being a little wonky right here. So apparently this thing has it kind of uh, grasping and uh, making potential landfall in Venezuela as a strong, uh, not a strong, but a tropical storm. And then it starts afterward intensifying at a rather quick pace. And this is before it hits Nicaragua. The uh, the HMON is now at least where as far as it's going out, now depicting a 978 mi uh, millibar storm. And this has the potential to become a Category 2 hurricane at this point because the pressure is that low. The winds are going to be high enough. This is a serious situation that everyone from the Windward Islands to Trinidad and Tobago, Venezuela, parts of Colombia, and pretty much a lot of Central America needs to pay attention to because these track models are now increasingly showing that this thing is, is going to be crossing, not exactly through, but it's going to be making its way through Nicaragua, Honduras, Guatemala, potentially Belize, and that put, poses a huge flooding risk. So we need to take this very seriously. Now the h wharf model we need to talk about because, yeah, it goes down to about 978 as well. We're also going to have to go back and t talk about the path of this thing. So this thing kind of meanders for the next day. It starts to develop. It starts getting its act together. Considering that we're seeing already tropical storm force winds, and considering that this thing is getting more organized, those storms are bubbling up more and more, especially near the center, this thing could, de uh, this thing could fully develop into something by tomorrow. This is what we're look this is what we're looking at. Even the NHC says this this could happen the next day or so. My guess is that this is going to happen before it gets to the Windward Islands. If it doesn't, it's going to be right after that. So, I want everyone to understand this as I'm going through this. The H wharf continues as moving a little further to the north as it's staying over to sea. It starts strengthening into a strong tropical storm and then eventually a hurricane and then the pressure just starts dropping. This is as far as it goes out uh, right now. So this is basically where we are. The H, uh, the H wharf and H mon right here, like these are j brand new models. We okay, we have some new hours coming in. So yeah, the H mon has this thing making landfall potentially as a Category Two hurricane with winds of nine seven. Sorry, with winds of potentially up to hundred miles per hour and a pressure of nine seventy eight. So the way I see this is that if these models are correct and these are just two models and we have a Decent amount of models expecting this to become a hurricane. Everyone needs to take this very seriously. Now, I and if you've watched my videos before, I know a fair chunk of you haven't. I don't don't normally ask for this. Heck, I've only asked for this one other time. But what I need you to do is that if you're in the Windward Islands, if you're in Trinidad and Tobago, if you're in Venezuela, if you're in Central America, I need you to share this video. And if you are in the United States that has friends in these areas, share this video. Share this video with everyone that you uh, that you know there, because we need to take this very seriously. But with that being said, that's going to end this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some information out of this. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. I want to say thank you for 900 subscribers. Now we are growing at a very fast pace which I re it's really humbling to see. It also shows that people are taking this very seriously. So I really want to say thank you for that. But does not undertone the seriousness of the situation uh, that is going on right now. I will continue to update you guys as the situation develops. But with that being said, have a wonderful day. Keep monitoring this system and stay safe.